Sharing stories. That's what we do on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. All right, let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories. Episode number 439 is with Ashley Wilcott from Court TV. Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. I'm good, Arrow. Thanks for having me on today. Nice to hear your voice. Oh, I'll tell you what. I am addicted to this trial. This is my binge watch right now. And I every day, I'm right there. So it's, it's amazing what you guys are doing. Oh, thank you for that. But it, I, I am just as captivated as you are, for sure. So, Kate Moss this morning, were you expecting something longer than that? I mean, I was like, one, two, three, it was done. Yeah, and I have to be honest, I um, have been on shows, and so I wasn't able to watch all of her testimony. But she did what they wanted her to do, what she needed to do, which really rebut what Amber Heard had to say. So there was no reason to keep her longer. That's interesting you say that, because I looked at my wife, I said, that's it? And she goes, I wish they were all like that, because we we sit there for (laughs) hours just watching and going, all right, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? (laughs) I'm just laughing that your wife said that because the reality is trial skills. I teach trial skills. And to be a trial lawyer, it's strategic. And you want to make sure that you obviously present all the evidence that you need to present to support your case. But there's that line, right? You don't want to cross it. You don't want witnesses to testify too long. You don't want to ask too many unnecessary questions because you risk boring the jury. And there's some argument to be made by legal analysts that there has been testimony that has gone too long and that the jury has been bored at times this is the first time that i've ever seen the time and i didn't know this even existed that you only have so much time and they're running out of time they are running out of time you're not kidding 61 hours 15 minutes each side has to try the case and robert durst was a criminal trial but interestingly that was another big trial in which the attorneys were given a limited amount of time and in that trial they would go over time and the judge would give them more time because it took longer but in this trial you are right they are almost out of time and i believe that's why we expect closing arguments to be this friday wow and and, and how about the history lesson that we've had over the past couple of days with with the, with the goldwater uh, rule oh my gosh you know that one i i'm i'm a trial nerd and so (laughs) to watch that and to hear an expert say guess what he violated an ethical rule of the american psychiatric association and violated this rule because he gave an opinion on someone he's never seen he's never treated he's never met with i mean that's significant that was a huge blow to amber heard's case and wasn't that also a blow yesterday with the dude with uh, that that came from the from the trailer park uh, th- you know place I mean because I mean the, everything was taking place but he kind of said that Johnny was co- you know kind of just backing away from Amber it goes against what what people have said yeah, and he used even better language than that, right? When he testified, he said that that Johnny kind of was cowardly yeah. uh, uh, pulling away from Amber after Amber pulled him away from the group by about 30 feet. So to your point, it was a little bit of a newly discovered witness, so to speak, because he happened to post on social media that he was there and, and that he didn't see it happen. And so then Johnny Depp's team, of course, both of these teams following social media, paying attention to what's going on during the trial, and they located him and interviewed him and and were able to present him as a witness. So you're right. There's a corroborating witness for Johnny Depp because he's saying, I didn't see that happen. I didn't see what Amber Heard said happened at Hicksville. I did not see it. And I own the trailer park and I was there. <laughs> Who's paying the bills for all these witnesses or are they coming in there voluntarily? Oh, great question. So anybody can be subpoenaed to be a witness. And if you or I receive a subpoena, you have to either appear or you have to have an attorney file an appropriate motion to quash and be told by the court you don't have to appear. Or number three, you have to be released by the person who subpoenaed you. You wouldn't get paid. I wouldn't get paid. You have to be there in court. Now, the exception are experts. Experts, guess what, generally get paid. It's either an expert who's done a forensic evaluation at the order of the court, and the court might pay for that, depending on the circumstances. That didn't happen here. Instead, these experts are paid by the side who has asked them to come testify. So. Johnny Depp's team is paying for some of the experts. And guess what? Amber Heard's team is paying for her experts. Are you amazed at how in-depth these questions are? And the reason why I bring that up is because my favorite thing to do is to question the answers. And it seems like they, they take that and keep running with it. Well, I think there's strategy involved as well. That is part of the goal. So, you know, direct examination should always be not leading who, what, when, where, how, describe, explain to get the narrative out. And so that's what you do. Who, what, when, where, how, please explain, describe. 
you get your narrative out. Cross-examination, though, really, in terms of trial skills, should be very strategic. You don't want to get in there and ask every single question. Right. You want to ask the questions for the information that you would use in a closing argument. You want to go in and pinpoint exactly your points and pull it out. And remember, cross-examination really isn't about the answer that they give on the stand. It's about you saying what you want the jury to hear. Yeah. Well, isn't it true that you were involved in domestic violence? You know, whatever the question is. And so that's really a skill, a strategy and you don't always want to ask all of the questions because you might risk boring the jury or getting an answer you didn't expect that might hurt your case is is there a reason why amber was looking at the jurors because it, it seems like that she was she was speaking to them more than she was speaking to everybody else Absolutely. That is called prepping your witness. And that's a good thing. You should always prepare your witness. Tell them to tell the truth. Tell them these are the questions I'm going to ask you. But who is she trying to convince? The jury. The jury. They're the ones yeah. making the decision. A witness should always look at the jury. And she did it right because she looked at the jury. Speaking of the eyes, Johnny Depp, I mean, I, I was I, I was Googling everything, trying to figure out why he was not looking up at, at Amber. And I think that that's part of the drama of this. And in fact, did you see, I don't know if you were able to watch, it's many, many hours and we all have to work in addition to watching this all the time, but I have to say this. So that was, and it was a hard hitting cross-examination according to a lot of legal analysts. That's the first thing they said to Amber Heard. Johnny Depp hasn't looked at you once, has he? No. In fact, he can't stand to look at you. Mm -hmm. So Depp's team used that probably strategically to say, He's so disgusted by Amber Heard, he can't even look at her. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God! You know I can't talk about this on on social media because I there are so many people taking sides, and I don't want to you know I don't want to be you know uh, trolled or anything like that. I just I just want this thing to play out, and then we can talk about it. That's how I am as a former judge. And Arrow, you're the first one that said that to me because I want to hear all the evidence before I give my opinion. And you're, but let me just say this: that social media court of public opinion. They generally support Johnny Depp yeah. and believe that he is the victim and that Amber Heard is the aggressor. Is the jury going to find the same thing based on the evidence, again, that they've heard in the courtroom? They're not hearing everything else we're hearing. What are they going to decide? That's why it's so exciting to see what is this jury going to do. Let's put some focus on this darn sidebar. What's going on up there? Are you guys talking about lunch and stuff? I mean, come on. All right. So, you know, I've said this on, on, on air and I'll say it again. The purpose of a sidebar is so that the attorneys can argue and to the judge what their objection is, what they okay. want the judge to do outside the hearing of the jury. There's a very important place in trials for sidebars. My opinion, my opinion only, I'm just going to share as a former judge, there are way too many of them because mm -hmm. what is it doing? It's wasting the jury's time. And so I get frustrated when I keep hearing sidebar, 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 because generally if I were trying a case as a judge, I say to the attorneys, what are the issues? Let's resolve them before we get in front of the jury. And then if there are objections that still have to be resolved during the trial, I rein it in. I say, okay, after after all these jurors leave for the day, come back to chambers, let's sort it out. If we need to put it on the record, we will. What are all these objections? What are the problems? What are the issues? What is my ruling? I'll put my ruling on the record, but I'm not gonna have this many sidebars during the course of the trial and waste the jury's time. Having said that, I'm sure they're legitimate objections. I'm sure they are evidentiary issues and you can only make a speaking objection in court. That means you can just say the basis. So you say, for instance, objection hearsay, and if you want to say more you can't say it in front of the jury you have to have a sidebar yeah. so are they real are there real reasons for them yes i believe that there are are they excessive in my personal opinion yes i believe that they are <laughs> you you could turn this whole entire trial in into a, a drinking game and every time someone says speculate speculate and then or hearsay objection i mean it's i, I would love to go back on those transcripts and see how many times those words were actually used during this situation and I think that I would add to that, if you're a law student or a lawyer, add to that drinking game, if you would, <laughs> how many of the objections were correct? Right. <laughs> how many of them were correct? Because legal analysts have watched and said, that's the wrong objection. That isn't an objection. Why did you make that objection? So there's also that aspect of it. You know, one of the things that I, especially yesterday, I, I was paying attention to, and my wife and I talked about this intensely yesterday, is I, I can barely stay awake watching it. What? How, how are they staying awake? And then all of a sudden, I, I swear I saw Johnny fall asleep at the end. 
<laughs> there have been a couple of memes that you may have seen or social media where they show Johnny Depp sleeping during part of the trial. Is he sleeping? I don't know. But I think that public has been suggesting that as well. So I can tell you this. Our own Chanley Payne, our court TV legal correspondent, smart, smart girl in court in Virginia and gives us information. And she has said that she watches the jury. It's a jury of seven, two alternates. So nine individuals sitting there watching. She said that they are engaged taking notes, paying attention. Wow. She did point out though, that there's a difference sometimes between the live testimony and the video depositions that are played. And that during those video depositions, if there are a lot of those in a given day, that the jury does seem to be a little more bored, a little more restless, maybe yawning. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a distinction between the types of testimony, but generally she says they are engaged and listening. I noticed something yesterday with, with Amber, how uh, speaking of being engaged, she was having conversations yesterday yesterday more than ever she's had with with her lawyers there she was smiling she was she looked into that camera uh, many times Arrow, you and I could hang out because I said the exact same thing. I said, look at Amber, look at Amber. She's reacting, she's talking. She was during the testimony and really part of the time I saw it the most was again, the trailer park owner, mm -hmm. the Hicksville trailer palace owner testifying. And she was discussing a lot. So, you know, you don't really know if that's her and she has a lot to say, or if it's the PR team saying, hey, we're monitoring all of everybody watching and what they're saying on social media and we need you to be more ABC. We don't know which one it is. Why is the gallery so active? I mean, is that is that normal for, for it to be up and down, up and down people growing? You know, because it takes my mind off from what what I'm seeing. That is all managed by the judge. Wow. What happens in a courtroom is managed by the court. And I'll give you an example. And I am not bashing anyone. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. But I had very long trials that lasted very long days. Even with those, food and drink was not allowed in the courtroom. You could have water, but that was it. Because I would give breaks, I would give lunch if you needed to go get a snack, if you needed to have a drink, if you needed to go to the bathroom. But I believe court's very formal. So in my courtroom, you don't bring food and drink. But this is a more relaxed court. The yeah. judge has obviously allowed them to be gummy bears on Johnny Depp. Somebody saw Amber Heard taking bites of something. The attorneys have had multiple drinks on their desk. So clearly this judge is more informal, does allow this probably to ensure that everybody can be comfortable getting through the trial. So all of that, those things are in the court's discretion. How the gallery acts how active they are getting up and down. That's in the judge's discretion. Now, I have to tell you this story and I've shared it with some others, but I have to tell you, we talked about it on Sport TV on Monday. I don't know if you saw this or not or know this or not. It would have been in our commentary. You wouldn't have witnessed it. But after the jury left on Monday, you know, a hundred wristbands for public to come in and watch the trial. Yep. And a woman with a child cried out after the jurors had left <laughs> for the break. I love you, Johnny. Our souls are connected. When are you going to admit this baby is yours? <laughs> so that crossed a line and the court appropriately had the deputy remove her and she's not allowed back in the courtroom. So, well, I, so just I, a little, a color of the courtroom for you. I swear I thought I saw a woman with, with a baby carriage yesterday leave right there toward the end. I'm going, oh my God, she's back. That's the same one. She's not allowed in the courtroom. And Chanley Painter reported to us and she was seen in part of our video. Yes, oh but she's God. not allowed back in the courtroom. Oh, my God. <laughs> Great observation. I arrow, please have me on again. You and I could talk about this all day <laughs> because of all these details that it's remarkable. We're seeing play out in front of us. That's why it's so important to have court uh, TV cameras in a courtroom. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I am old enough to remember when when they first introduced the cameras to the courtroom. And I and I really do see what you guys are doing as part of the education because there's a lot of people think that that these court cases are over with in 30 minutes or 60 minutes and 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 for it to be this long so far is an eye-opening experience yeah absolutely and i'm going to say this education is prevention and it's one reason i'm an advocate for uh, TV cameras in the courtroom because I think it should be transparent. It does give everyone a look at how our justice system really works, whether it's a criminal case, which many of them are, a civil case like this one is. It, it lets you see firsthand exactly what happens, how it works. There's a transparency offered, and I think it also raises the bar because guess what? If you're an attorney and you think you're going to be on TV, I would hope 
that you really, really hone those trial skills before you walk into the courtroom. All right, here's a question for you. We know that Johnny Depp is is doing, he's scribbling, he's 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 creating pictures and stuff like that. Legally, can he take what he what he has sketched out and sell that after the court case? Because I want it. I want what he was doing. <laughs> Some other people have said that. So there can be courtroom. Remember, the judge gets to manage the courtroom. So again, his being allowed to have a coloring book and colors is a judge's decision. So clearly that's allowed in this case. Next step. Can he sell those? Well, those are his. He can do what he wants with them. However, the court could potentially, I'm not saying she does, I don't know this, but a court could potentially say anybody who's been taking notes in this courtroom, whether it's the jury, whether it's a party, unless it's attorney client, anything else, whether the gallery's been doing it, has to be destroyed before you leave the courtroom. Did she do that for the parties for the gallery? Probably not, but theoretically those rules could be put in place by the judge. So when when they were talking about Johnny Depp's rings, because I've I've always been familiar with those rings since the day one. But when they were when they were talking about it in detail and all that kind of stuff, did in you, in the back of your mind did you say if they don't fit you must acquit? Because I felt like we were, that's where we were going. <laughs> <laughs> I came home after the I said that to my family. I cannot believe you said that, Arrow. I said because I was talking about trials. My poor kids. I've got three teenagers and I talk with this. But they this is the first trial, right? I've been on court TV covering all these major criminal trials, and the first one they want to talk about is Johnny Depp. Yep. Because all the kids are talking about it. it's a whole new demographic. But I was talking to them about trial skills and strategy and that you have to have a theme when you do your opening statement. You have to carry that theme throughout. And if the glove fits, you must acquit. Doesn't fit, you must acquit. Exactly. I mean, that to me was just a, we need to see that in this trial for the side who wants to win. We need to see that theme carried throughout. And, and another big blunder. And I, I totally lost it. And I wish I could have been inside Johnny Depp's mind when they when the guy goes. Uh, is is Marlon Brando even alive? It's like, are you kidding me? What where, where, where yeah. did this come from? Yeah, yeah, those kind of blunders. And then there was questioning by one of uh, Amber Heard's attorneys, and basically it, it it made clear that she didn't understand how Twitter worked, and that she wanted to say again the trailer park um, owner uh, followed someone on on Twitter and what came out was no, he didn't follow. He simply liked or commented on it, right? Very different things. And so those kinds of things, that's what I mean. When you're a trial lawyer, and especially at this high profile, high dollar, you better know your stuff. And if you don't know something like, hey, is he alive? You better not let it come out of your mouth. Do you think the greatest lesson here for every person around the world is, hey, look, you may have tweeted something 10 years ago. If it's needed in court, it's coming back up. Your, your stuff is not going away. Well, you know what? People should know that without this kind of trial. Quite frankly, I teach my kids that all the time. It can come back to bite you. It can be used in court. People don't realize that. They don't think it to be true. I think this case is the first time you have got a regular person out doing a job. And I got to tell you, this trailer park owner, his testimony, I thought, boy, I'd go to somewhere he owned because he is on top of his property, right? Mm -hmm. It sounded like he would take care of every detail. But guess what? He's a regular worker like the rest of us. And he had to come to court and testify. He even testified he didn't reach out. He didn't want to come to court, but he had to. So it is a very valuable lesson that guess what? That can happen to any one of us. If it's relevant and admissible, you may have to go to court. Who pays for his trip from California to Virginia? Come on. I mean, I know what fuel prices are right now. Right. So so the reality is when you subpoena someone out of state or far away, you have to deal with that. And usually state laws provide if you subpoena a witness, this is how much you have to pay them in mileage, for instance. Right. So I'm in Georgia. I subpoena a witness in South Georgia four hours away. I have to pay for their mileage to come to court and I have to send that with the subpoena for it to be a valid subpoena. So the laws provide for that. They take that into account because the goal is not to say you can subpoena anybody you want and they're out of pocket $2,000. The goal is to say, this is the reasonable about you have to pay them for their travel wow. to have them come to court if you subpoena them. Great question. Wow. Good talk today, Ashley. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. Arrow, I would love to. I appreciate all your great, great, insightful questions and following this trial. (laughs) Will you be brilliant today, okay? All right, you too. Have a great day.